Well, we were always surrounded by water. It, it was a city, Ottawa that is, that has three rivers colliding into basically one spot. And water was basically everywhere. Falling water, tranquil water like lakes in the Gatineau Park, which was Ottawa's playground, really. The difference, the big difference I see now in terms of water is how little swimming there is. It used to be that there were beaches all along the Rideau River, probably more spots along the Ottawa River, and certainly spots in the Gatineau Park where people swam all the time, and that's less the case. There aren't too many beaches except perhaps out uh, near Mooney's Bay where people do swimming in the Rideau River now. Britannia Beach is, uh, I think, gone. Brighton Beach on the Rideau River is gone. Brentwood Beach, I think, is gone. Our relationship to water has changed a lot because of declining access to it. And what the implications of that are, it's an interesting question to, to think about because we need to be rethinking our relationship to nature, uh, water, but also, also plant life, the whole question of biodiversity comes up and it's a, it's a critical issue that uh, we need to address fairly urgently. What comes to mind when I think about water memories of this region is mostly just a smattering of different memories from different eras of my life. So like from the late 80s up until now. One is of the lakes, so thinking especially around like Meech Lake and the quality of the water of the lakes feeling so different from the quality of the water of the river that we grew up on, the Gatineau River. Like the lake water feeling a lot softer and a lot warmer and a lot stiller. And I have these memories of spending the day at Meech Lake as a family. The water felt so much less dense and so much softer somehow. Then being introduced to the Wilson Carbide ruins and the kind of like fast moving waterfalls and stuff around there. And then I have this kind of memory every time I go back to the Gatineau River and swim in it, there's just this very kind of jarring like familiarity to it and it's something that I don't even feel in relation to other rivers but there's just this, something really specific it's probably some kind of combination of you know the temperature and the density and the taste of it that feels very specific to that body of water and then I think about doing cross-country running in high school in and around film and right and coming across you know, Leamy Lake, and then more recently, really I'm just left with this kind of smattering of memories and then this kind of scaffolding over time of my brain learning to connect all of those bodies of water or learning to understand how each of those bodies of waters communicate with each other, but that being a very, very gradual process um, and not necessarily knowing that with each of your first encounters with each of those bodies of water. Moi, je viens de la Petite Nation et euh, j'ai grandi avec la rivière Petite Nation qui coulait dans mes veines. C'est vraiment un lieu pour moi qui est encore très important. Ce qui est intéressant dans la région de la Petite Nation puis avec la rivière Petite Nation qui se déverse dans la rivière des Outaouais, c'est de sentir à quel point euh, il y a une histoire euh, qui est reliée à ces rivières-là puis à la, à la jonction de la rivière Petite Nation puis de la rivière des Outaouais, là où il y a le Parc national de Plaisance maintenant qui était un endroit très important euh, au niveau historique euh, avec les Premières Nations, qui faisaient beaucoup d'échanges commerciaux, là, des regroupements. Puis on peut sentir toute l'énergie qui est concentrée dans cet endroit-là, qui était vraiment important pour les gens du passé, mais aussi pour les gens du présent. Donc cette importance-là s'est transmise aussi euh, dans les époques. 
et toutes les rivières qui sont dans la petite nation ou dans l'Outaouais en général qui se déversent dans, dans l'Outaouais, on peut comme sentir cette relation-là à la petite rivière qui se, qui se connecte à la plus grande rivière qui éventuellement se connecte euh, ben, au fleuve Saint-Laurent et à l'océan. Donc, euh, la, la connexion entre les générations, mais la connexion aussi euh, à, travers, euh, à travers les mo molécules d'eau. this place is actually something that I really love about the water and that's how it freezes and thaws every year. I live along the Gatineau River and when you come down the road it looks almost like a lake and it freezes over every winter and I always think it's never going to thaw and then it does and I really feel that My soul or my spirit follows the freezing and the thawing of the river. And every spring, it just gives me hope. summer last year when my cousins from France came and we went on Lac Philippe which is in Masham and we went paddle boarding and it was my first time paddle boarding and it was just like I looked at the water underneath my feet and it was like a mysterious magical feeling to look at it and all the life that you see but It's just dark, and then there's life underneath that you don't see. Yeah, and I just thought that was a really, like, big memory that I have about the water. Because it's just remembering all the life that there is in the water. a décidé, on n'avait pas de plan, on a décidé de se laisser dériber. Et donc on est tout doucement, l'eau, le, le courant, on est passé, il nous a emmenés, on n'était pas sûr, on, avait, on était en train de manger aussi, on faisait un pique-nique. C'était très beau, je trouvais, parce que le fait qu'on ne décidait pas où on allait, que c'était l'eau qui nous portait, qu'on n'était pas responsable de, entre guillemets, de, de nos de notre futur. J'ai aimé ça. Et je me rappelle cette fois-ci comment c'était le silence. 
on entendait, on entendait vraiment les oiseaux, on entendait des, je sais pas, peut-être des loutres qui rentraient, euh, des hauteurs ou des, qui rentraient dans l'eau. Et en fait, on est arrivé au moment où on a dit, bon, peut-être ça serait le moment de, de, de s'arrêter là. On est arrivé sur une petite île qui doit être juste avant Chelsea, juste avant le, le barrage, où il y avait, euh, je crois que c'était un héron. Qui, euh, mais c'était une petite île juste presque assez grande pour lui en fait et on a eu l'impression vraiment d'être de le déranger donc on a essayé de faire très très doucement et en fait il avait un nid c'était très beau de, de voir son, son petit paradis secret là il était euh, au calme personne ne pouvait le déranger Well, a water memory of I've had is that um, in the winter before we'd go every Sunday we'd walk on the the frozen Gatineau River and we we'd always be scared of it cracking but it was always fun to uh, uh, walk across it. We actually wouldn't go the other side but we'd go along it right to Molos. Now it's called Cafe Earl but it was called Molos then and we'd like have a hot chocolate and we'd always play card games and it was super fun every time. water memory that I have was um, I was hanging out with a few friends and we just finished playing an exhausting game I think football or soccer we went down to the Gatineau River and we dipped our feet in the water and it felt so you know it felt really amazing because to have your legs dangling off the steps into the soft and changing currents and like I know it's just it was very hot out and the water was like pretty cold so No, it did like it did something to like the body to have like two different feelings at the same time. When I was young, maybe in like my early 20s, I came back between like two sessions and um, for a whole summer up until November, because my session was starting in like in November, I would go to a place on the Kitchissippi River that is uh, situated right near the, the place they had hydro dams near Deschine in Elmer, the Elmer sector. And so I would go to this little place that's like directly on the rapids. So you would cross like this little corridor and go on the other side of the island and there was like a little ledge off of the island where you could sit in the water 
So all my legs and all my chest were in the water, but it was really calm water, but maybe two meters off the ledge were the rapids. So it was really a space where I could encounter the river in all its kind of powers that were extremely soothing and calming, but also so powerful. Like there was something so immensely raw and the way they eroded the, the hydro dam. So that was a space that I'd love to go to. And um, I haven't been back in the past years. There are just so many people and places, but um, I have a lot of fun memories going there early in the morning, being the only person around. Maybe my sister was around. We would love to do that together. And it was... Yeah, it was like a, an amazing moment of communion. Mm -hmm. J'ai des beaux souvenirs sur la rivière des Outaouais. On se promenait en bateau, en famille, puis on ramassait les bio qui flottaient sur l'eau, euh, les bio qui remontaient à la surface de la drave qu'il y avait dans le temps pour euh, aller, aller directement à l'usine euh, résolue qui est aujourd'hui pour faire le papier. Euh, aujourd'hui, il n'y en a plus beaucoup, euh, mais dans le 20 ans, le 30 ans, il y en avait énormément, ces bio-là qui flottaient. On, souvent, on maganait les bateaux parce qu'ils flottaient sur l'eau puis on les voyait pas. Fait que pour moi, c'est des beaux souvenirs. Puis en même temps, mais tu penses au passé. Il y a des gens qui ont travaillé là avec la drave. Il y a des gens qui ont, qui ont passé leur vie à faire ça. Puis nous, on ramassait le restant qui, qui allait au fond de l'eau. Moi, mon souvenir par rapport à l'eau que je veux partager, c'est une journée euh, magique que j'ai passée en canot avec une amie. On était au, au lac La Pêche. Puis, euh, une fois, on avait monté la petite rivière qui connecte là. Euh, on avait fait le, le tour plus vers l'ouest du lac, où ce qu'on avait vu plein d'animaux. On a vu des petites méduses à d'eau douce que je savais même pas qu'elles existaient. À un moment donné, il y a une buse qui nous a passé par-dessus, euh, par de, par de, ben, qui a passé par-dessus nous. Puis comme que je plaçais mon tabac dans l'eau pour dire, « Merci pour ta visite. » Il y a un roar qui m'a sorti juste à côté. Puis c'était juste une surprise après, après l'autre, cette journée-là. On est arrêté sur le bord pour prendre notre dîner. On a découvert des, des vieilles ruines, un vieux chemin qui menait là. Um, c'était vraiment comme deux enfants qui, qui reconnectaient avec la nature. Puis écoute, on est, on est plus jeunes, mais c'est ça que ça fait. Quand tu passes du temps sur l'eau, tu, tu passes du temps avec toi-même. Tu passes du temps avec qui tu es à l'intérieur. Tu, tu apprends à écouter autour de toi, tu apprends à écouter à qu ce qui se passe à l'intérieur de toi. I want to share um, a memory of Nibi, the water. Um, one of the first times I went up to the Madawaska River, I was with a friend who has some land up there. And I decided to go down and introduce myself to the water. And as I stepped in, it was like this whole spirit of welcoming 
encapsulated me. And it was such an amazing experience. But I, I, I've felt other places too, in other rivers and other bodies of water. But it was like this first kind of welcoming acknowledgement that I've ever experienced before and then afterwards. Um, the Metawaska has my heart. Um, it's like it remembered me and it was welcoming me back home. And I have, to this day, I now always introduce myself to any type of body of water that I, I visit and, you know, give my prayer and give my thanks to the water. But I think the Madawaska is such a beautiful river and it's, it was once a highway that the indigenous people used to travel back and forth. And they, um, and I, I can see why, I can see why the river is, you know, rapid in certain places, but it also has these soft flowing spaces. And I think that's why I continuously go back time and time again. Miigwech. <laughs>